Coming off a holiday bowl and a nine-win regular season for them. Look at some of their commits, including a four-star guy in Logan Jones, defensive tackle. A few different defensive linemen here, but they've also got some offensive guys. A nice haul for Kirk Ferentz, who's about to start his 22nd year in charge of the program in Iowa City. Now, Iowa's Kirk Ferentz wasn't able to join us on the first signing day due to bowl game travel, but he's with us now. And Kirk, this is your best ranked recruiting class top to bottom in a decade. How have you or your staff changed your philosophy over the last couple of years? Yeah, I got to tell you, that's news to me. I really don't follow that real closely. Uh, I'm more interested in the January polls, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, overall... Uh, it's like anything else you do in football. It's all about teamwork, and I think uh, we've had a staff now. It's been together a couple of years. Uh, we understand, I think, a little bit better maybe what each other are looking for, uh, what we think is important in a prospect, and uh, I think the staff's really worked well together. They communicate well. Uh, well. Uh, you know, have been very honest about uh, assessments, evaluations, those types of things, and I think good in sharing information. So all of it just kind of, I think, evolves, and... Uh, you know, hopefully with each day you're involved in anything, you get a little bit smarter, and I think, I think I've seen that with our entire staff. One of those guys on defense is Logan Jones, top player in the state of Iowa. What stood out about him? You know, Logan, uh, somebody made the comparison, Tyler Linderbaum, who's a young guy in our program, they made the comparison of the two of them. Uh, just a really good two-way player uh, in his program, a very successful program. Uh, he's not a real outspoken guy, kind of a quiet guy like Tyler, but just a very determined and focused player. And uh, coincidentally, oh, it was about two weeks ago, I was sitting in a coach's uh, office uh, out on the road recruiting, and he had coached in the All-Star game that Logan played in and talked about Logan being uh, you know, 15 minutes early for every meal, every meeting, and just had a really good focus and practice that way. So you know, that's kind of what we thought we identified in Logan, and uh, you know, we're really, really uh, happy about him. And he is a guy probably could play the other side of the football, uh, but our intentions are to start him out at defensive tackle. From Logan to Hogan, what was it you liked when you first saw Deuce Hogan throw a football around? Well, I, I still haven't seen him throw live, but I've seen him on tape, obviously, and he's a, a really electric football player. Uh, he, he was here probably a year ago, June, maybe. I guess I'm thinking back. Uh, he and his family, minus his sister, were here. Uh, and that was our first introduction to him. He drove up from uh, ta Texas. Uh, that made a big impression on us, the fact that they'd get in the car and come up here uh, as a family. Outstanding young man, uh, tremendous family. His dad's a coach, uh, a little bit like Drew Tate. You know, a lot of, a lot of players we've had that have uh, dads that are in the coaching world. Nate Stanley, same way. So he comes from a football family. He's, uh, you know, clearly uh, a student of the game and, and a guy that's kind of a football junkie. Also a very, very strong leader in his program, and we're confident uh, he'll be one in our program as well. Already has been with the recruiting aspect of things, trying to rally guys. So we just, uh, we really like all the intangibles. Certainly like what we saw on film as well. Before we let you go, I should tell you, your running back recruit, LaShawn Williams, is here in studio with us today. You got a message for him? Well, I, I got to tell you, I'm, uh, I'm extremely impressed with LaShawn, too, and had a chance to be there this winter. I guess it was back in, in December. And, uh, you know, you, you think you know players, you, you get to know them a little bit, and, but it's, it's fun to go in their schools and be in their home environment and learn more about them. And, just really impressed with his discipline, uh, the little details that he pays attention to. We were talking about his diet, and it's really unusual for a guy who's 17, 18 year olds to be so acutely aware uh, of what he's doing, how he trains, and how he, uh, you know, his nutrition, sleep patterns, all those kinds of things. So he, he made a great impression on me just during that visit. Uh, obviously, we think he's a really good football player. We're excited to have him come to campus here in June. Kirk Ferentz, congratulations on a very good class. Thanks for giving us some of your time today. Thanks, Mike. Good to talk to you. Now here's a look at where the Hawkeyes went to get their players. You see an awful lot of states, including five from the state of Illinois. And in that five is LaShawn from Oak Lawn, <laughs> who's standing by with Howard. LaShawn, we got to talk about this, your diet. When did you get so meticulous about what you put into your body? Really at a young age, after taking so many visits here and the coaches preach that, you know, just stay hydrated. And, you know, if you want to perform at the top level, you got to treat your body like a car, so... I feel like you got to put the right things in it so you can run, you know, good field. Tell me about your workout program at high school. Oh, it's it's amazing at Richards. You know, they train, they try to get you prepared for college. Then you know they they got they got high expectations for us all to play at the next level. So we, we really train like college athletes. When you think about playing for Kurt Ferentz, you know, you had some oh, yeah. really good running backs come through that program, and now you have an opportunity to add your name to that list. What comes to mind? I mean, he, you know, he's a he's a great coach. You know, he got a good legacy. You know, they always bring in some of the best old linemen. So I just can't wait to you know get behind him and 
You know, that's great. So that brings it up. So you knew the old lineman already, so you wanted to go run behind a good one? Oh, uh, that's a plus. You know, as me being a running back, ain't nothing like having a good old line. <laughs> Tell me about your recruiting process. I mean, I got I first started off with the Mac. I was my first Big Ten um, offer, and, you know, from there, it just felt like a home. I, when you talk about felt like a home, what was it? Was it was it the players? Was it the staff? The environment? Talk to me a little bit about that. I had a teammate the first year that I had played with my junior named Sebastian Castro. He had committed that too. He he a safety. You know, we had a good relationship, and we always talked about uh, you know playing in college with each other. But it was just like a joke. And I had been talking to Iowa for a while. We had built I had built a strong relationship with the coaches and. After I took my visit, I mean, I fell in love with the tradition, you know, as you guys probably know about the Hawkeye wave, it just was like, it just felt like home. What's it been like for your family? Oh, it's, it's been amazing. I, they love Iowa, too. You know, they're sitting here with me. They love Iowa. I love Iowa, so it's just, it's just a perfect fit. Expectations you have? I want to come in and help the team as many ways as I can. I want to be able to exceed in the weight room, in the classroom, and off the field. Just, you know, just do whatever the team needs to win. Well, I think you're off to a really great start already taking care of his body, doing the right things with that, Mike. He knows what he's doing. I think they're getting a very mature player. Yes, they are indeed. Let's talk about some of the other good players they've got, including this defensive lineman named Logan Jones. Yeah, you think Iowa, you think homegrown lineman on both sides of the football, and Logan Jones is the top-ranked player in the state of Iowa. Uh, extremely high motor explosive player who at 255 pounds maybe a little bit light for the inside but i was i was a program who can add the weight quickly uh, also an outstanding athlete in other sports that's what we really liked about him to rank him that highly he's a starter on the basketball team was one of the top shot put and discus throwers in iowa in addition to what he did on the football field with that motor and then sticking on the defensive line deontay craig uh, joins Logan in what I think is one of the strengths of this class. He comes in from Culver Academy, not a big school, but he was also a multi-sport athlete, outstanding basketball player at Culver. And I think uh, he can help Iowa immediately because he can put heat on the quarterback. He uses the same athleticism that let him excel on the basketball court to bend the corner, to run down plays, and uh, he has that specific skill of pass rush that I think can get him on the field, at least early in his career, if not as a true freshman. Luke Lachey, tight end, seems to me Iowa's a pretty good place to go if you play tight end. <laughs> and yet he split out here. But but they do that some at Iowa. They're, Brian Ferentz, offensive coordinator, is multiple formations, so you're going to see him split out here. He's more of an H-back in, in this game, and Iowa will do the same thing with him. They'll detach him from the line of scrimmage quite a bit. He's 6'6", 220. You know, he could be 6'6", 255, 260 in a couple years and not be able to split out but be a traditional tight end. Either way, they're getting a really good athlete. A guy can and do a lot of things, and that's really what you're looking for tight in a tight end and an H-back. Yeah, you got your best player, you give him the football. Gavin Williams is another one of those players of running back that they're going to try to get the football to as well. You talk about having enough guys that are going to be able to create competition, in-state guy. I think this is a, a nice player when you start to think about what he's able to do. Again, inside the tackles, you see the jump cut there. Getting behind his pads, he runs a little bit high right now, but I think that's something that obviously can be corrected. It continues to get coached. You see him catching a nice screen play balls in the right hand and then you see some of the speed that he has to finish plays that's what you're going to need to be able to do at that level and you know talking to kirk about the best class i've had in a decade it was very kirk ferentz he downplayed it. i don't know about that i don't pay attention <laughs> i'll wait ask me and tell me in a couple of years right ask exactly that question. but but they're doing something well i mean no matter what your best class in the decade that that's important yeah, we mentioned earlier in the show, Coach touched on the aggressiveness now of Iowa and Wisconsin changing their philosophies a little bit. They've got a number of 2021 commits. I think they've even got a 22 commit, which is very rare for Iowa. They're extending offers earlier, getting guys on campus earlier. So they, they haven't totally switched around their philosophy of getting guys to camp or getting guys on campus or the type of kids they recruit, but they've just started recruiting them earlier. And there's no doubt, and Kirk said this a lot of time, he wishes we could be like it used to be. You play your senior season, you get a home visit from a coach, you evaluate the tape, and you recruit them. But it's, it's not going to go that way. But young coaches, they don't understand that way. <laughs> they, they were recruited Never, under, yeah. under the more modern system. So as the staff changes, so does the philosophy. And you and I were talking about Kirk willing to adjust. He's listening to some of the younger coaches. And he doesn't, and he said it during your interview, Mike, he doesn't necessarily agree with right. it. But he has to adjust to it, and that's what he's doing. I think one of the things that's going to continue to grow, at least in my mind, is on 
campus camps as far as being able to evaluate players. You're going to want every guy or the majority of the guys that you ultimately signed to have been in your camp so you have an opportunity to work with him and, and see how he takes to your style of coaching. I think that'll be another big wave that some of the bigger schools are doing right now, but I think will continue to permeate through our college football. And the only thing that Kirk won't compromise, in my opinion, is the fit. You know, yeah. that's the one thing he wants, as most coaches do. But he, he knows who he, the, what he wants in the Iowa program. And regardless of when they sign, he's going to stick to that. 21 full seasons at Iowa, most of them successful. Right. He's <laughs> probably got a good North Star in that regard for sure.